where we left off after the meiosis videos is that we had two gametes. We had a sperm and an egg. Let me draw the sperm. So you had the sperm, and then you had an egg. Maybe I'll do an egg in a different color. That's the egg, and we all know how this story goes. The sperm fertilizes the egg, and all, a whole cascade of events start occurring. Uh, the, the walls of the egg then become impervious to other sperm, so that only one sperm uh, can get in. But that's not the focus of this video. The focus of this video is how this fertilized egg develops once it has become a zygote. So after it's fertilized, you're now, so you remember from the meiosis videos that each of these were haploid. Haploid. Or that they had, oh, I added an extra i there, or that, or that they had half the contingency of the DNA, haploid. As soon as the sperm fertilizes this egg, now all of a sudden you have a diploid zygote. Let me do that. So now, let me pick a nice color. So now you're going to have a diploid zygote that's going to have 2n uh, a 2n complement of the dna material or, or you can or kind of the full complement of what a normal cell in our human body would have so this is diploid and it's a zygote which is just a fancy way of saying the fertilized egg and it's now ready to essentially turn into an organism. So immediately after fertilization, this zygote starts experiencing cleavage. And that's, well, it's experiencing mitosis, that's the mechanism, but it doesn't increase a lot in size. So it just, you know, this one right here will then turn into, it'll just split up via mitosis into two like that. And of course, these are each 2n, and then those are going to split into four like that and each of these are all have the the same exact genetic complement as that first zygote and it keeps splitting and this this i guess this this mass of cells we can start calling it this right here this is referred to as the morula morula and it actually comes from the word for mulberry because it looks like a mulberry so actually let me just kind of simplify things a little bit cuz we don't have to start here so we start with a zygote Zygote. This is a fertilized egg. It just starts duplicating via mitosis, and you end up with a with a ball of cells. It's often going to be a power of two because these cells, at least in the initial stages, are all duplicating it all at once. And then you have this morula. Morula. Now, once the morula gets to about 16 cells or so, and we're talking about four or five days, this isn't uh, an exact process, they start differentiating, differentiating a little bit, where the outer cells, and this kind of turns into a sphere. Let me make it a little bit more sphere-like. So you ha it starts differentiating between, let me make some outer cells, and this would be a cross-section of it. It's really going to be uh, look more like a sphere. That's the outer cells. And then you have your inner cells on the inside. These outer cells, these outer cells are going to be called, or are called, the trophoblasts. Let me do a different color. Trofo, trophoblast. Let me scroll over. Don't want to go there. And then the inner cells, and this is kind of the crux of what this video is all about. Let me scroll down a little bit. The inner cells, pick a suitable color. The inner cells right there are called the embryoblast. Embryoblast. And then what's going to happen is some fluid is going to start filling in some of this gap between the embryoblast and the trophoblast. So you're going to start having some fluid that comes in there. And so this, the morula will eventually look like this, where the trophoblast, or the outer membrane, is kind of this huge sphere of cells. And this is all happening as they keep replicating. Mitosis is the mechanism. So now my trophoblast is going to look like that. And then my embryoblast is going to look like this. Sometimes the embryoblast, so let me, so this is the embryoblast embryoblast. Sometimes it's also called the inner cell mass. So let me write that. Inner, inner 
cell mass. And this is what's going to turn into the organism. And so just, just so you know a couple of the labels that are involved here, if we're dealing with a mammalian organism, and we, we are mammals, we call this thing that the morula turned into is a zygote, then a morula, then the cells of the morula started to differentiate into the trophoblast, which are kind of the outside cells, and then the embryoblast. And then you have this, this space that forms here, and this is just fluid. Fluid. And it's called the blastocele. Blastocele. A very non intuitive spelling of the seal part of blastocele. But once this is formed, this is called a blastocyst. That's the entire thing right here. Let me scroll down a little bit. This whole thing is called the blastocyst. And this is the case in humans. In humans. Now, it can be a very confusing topic because a lot of times in a lot of books on biology, you'll say, hey, you go from the morula to the blastula or the blastosphere stage. Let me write those words down. So, you know, sometimes we'll say morula and you go to blastula. Blastula, and sometimes it's called blastosphere. Blastosphere. And I want to make it very clear that these are essentially the same stages in development. These are just for, uh, you know, in, in a lot of books they'll start talking about, you know, frogs or tadpoles or things like that. And this applies to them. While we're talking about mammals, especially the ones that are closely related to us, the the stage is the blastocyst stage. And the real differentiator is when people talk about just blastula and blastospheres, there isn't necessarily this differentiation between this these outermost cells and these these embryonic or this embryoblast or this inner inner cell mass here but since this the focus of this video is humans and really that's where I wanted to start from because that's what we are and that's what's interesting we're going to focus on the blastocyst now everything I've talked about in this video it was really to get to this point because what we have here these little green cells that I drew right here in the blastocyst, this inner cell mass, this is what will turn into the organism. And you say, okay, Sal, well if that's the organism, what's all of this what's all of this uh, these purple cells out here, this this trophoblast out there? That is going to turn into the placenta. And I'll do a future video where in a human it'll turn into a placenta. So let me write that down. It'll turn into the placenta. I'll do a, f a whole future video about, I guess, how babies are born, and I actually learned a ton about that uh, this past year because I, I, a baby was born in our house. But the, the placenta is really kind of what the what the embryo develops inside of, and it's it's the interface between, especially in humans and in mammals, between the developing fetus and its mother. So it kind of is is the exchange mechanism that that separates their two systems, but allows the necessary functions to go on between them. But that's not the focus of this video. The focus of this video is the fact that these cells, which at this point are they, they've differentiated themselves away from the placenta cells, but they still haven't decided what they're going to become. You know, maybe this cell and its its descendants may eventually start becoming part of the nervous system, while these cells right here might become muscle tissue, while these cells right here might I I don't know might become might become the liver. These cells right here are called embryonic stem cells. And probably the first time in this video you're hearing a term that you might recognize. So if I were to just take one of these cells, and actually just to introduce you to another term, as soon as, as soon as we, you know, we have this zygote here, and as soon as it starts dividing, each of these cells are called a blastomere. And you're probably wondering, Sal, why does this word "blast" keep appearing in this in this kind of uh, embryology videos, this you know these development videos? And that comes from it comes from the Greek for spore, blastos. So you know it's just as the the organism is beginning to spore out or uh, grow. But I, don't, I won't go into the the word origins of it. But that's where it comes from. And that's why everything has this blast in it. So these are blastomeres. So when I talk about embryonic stem cells, I'm talking about the individual blastomeres inside of this embryoblast, or inside of this inner cell mass. These words are actually uh, unusually fun to say. So each of these is an embryonic stem cell. Let me write this down in, in a vibrant color, because this is a, so each of these right here are embryonic stem cells. And I wanted to get to this in embryonic 
stem cells. And the reason why these are interesting, and I think you already know, is that there's a huge debate around these. One, these have the potential to turn into anything, that they have this, this plasticity. That's another word that you might hear. Let me write that down, too. Plasticity. And the word essentially comes from, you know, like a plastic can turn into anything else. When, some, when, we're, when we say that something has plasticity, we're talking about its potential to turn into a lot of different things. So uh, the, the theory is, and there's already some trials that seem to substantiate this, especially in some lower organisms, that look, if you have some damage at some point in your body, if you have some damage, let's say me draw a nerve cell. Let me say I have a, you know, I, I won't go into the, the actual mechanics of a nerve cell, but let's say that we have some damage at some point on a nerve cell right there. And because of that, uh, you know, someone is paralyzed or there's some nerve dysfunction, we're dealing with multiple sclerosis or who knows what. The idea is, is look, we have these cells here that could turn into anything. We could, that could turn to anything, it's, you know, and we're just really understanding how it knows what to turn into. It really has to look at its environment and say, hey, what's, what are the guys around me doing? And maybe that's what helps dictate what it does. But the idea is you take these things that could turn into anything and you put them where the damage is. So you start, you layer them where the damage is, and then they can turn into the cell that they need to turn into. So they, in this case, they would turn into nerve cells. They would turn into nerve cells and repair the damage and you know maybe uh, uh, cure the paralysis for that individual. So there's a, it's a huge, exciting area of research. And you could even, in theory, grow new organs if someone needs a kidney transplant or a heart transplant. Maybe in the future, we're, 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 we could take a colony of these embryonic stem cells. Maybe we can uh, put them in some type of other uh, creature or who knows what. And we can turn it into a replacement heart or a replacement kidney. So there's a huge, uh, a huge amount of excitement about what these can do. I mean, they could cure a lot of uh, uh, formerly uncurable diseases or provide, you know, hope for a lot of patients who might otherwise die. But obviously, uh, there's a debate here, and the debate all revolves around the issue of when, if you were to go in here and try to extract one of these cells, you're going to kill this embryo. You're going to kill this developing embryo. And that developing embryo had the potential to become a human being. So, you know, and I'll, I'll put it, it it's, it's, it's a potential. It obviously has to be in the right environment, and it has to, uh, you know, have a willing mother and, and, and all, all of the rest. But it does have the potential. And, and so for, if you, if for those, especially I think in the pro-life camp, who, who say, hey, you know, this, this, anything that has a potential to be a human being, that's, that's, that is life, and it should not be killed. So people on, the, on that side of the camp, they, they, they're against, you know, the, the destroying of this embryo. And, and I'm not he, making this video to take either sides of that argument, but, you know, it's a potential to turn into a human being. It's a potential, right? So obviously, there's a huge amount of debate, but now, now, you know in this video what people are talking about when they say embryonic stem cells. Well, and obviously the next question is, say, hey, well, why don't they just call them stem cells as opposed to embryonic stem cells? And that's because in, in all of our bodies, you do have what are called somatic stem cells. Let me write that down. Somatic or adult stem cells. And we all have them. They're in our bone marrow to help produce red blood cells, other parts of our body. But the problem with somatic stem cells is they're not as plastic. So not as plastic, which means that they can't form any type of cell in the human body. There's an area of research where people are actually may be trying to make them more plastic. And if they are, they are able to take these somatic stem cells and make them more plastic, it might um, might maybe kill the need to have these embryonic stem cells. Although if they, maybe if they do this too good, maybe, maybe these will have the potential to turn into human beings as well. So that could become a debatable issue. But right now, this isn't an area of debate because left to their own devices, a, a somatic stem cell or a, a adult stem cell won't turn into a human being, while an embryonic one, if it is implanted in a in a willing mother then of course it will turn into a human being. And I want to make one side note here because I don't want to take any sides on the debate uh, of, of, you know, of, of, well, I mean, facts are facts. This does have the potential to turn into a human being, but it also has the potential to save millions of lives. Those, both of those statements are facts, and then you can decide on your own which side of that uh, argument you'd like to, or what side of that balance you would like to kind of put your own opinion on. But there's one thing I want to talk about that's that in, in the public debate is never brought up. So you know, you have this notion of when you, 
what, to, to get an embryonic stem cell line, and when, when I say a stem cell line, I mean you take a couple of stem cells, or let's say you take one stem cell, and then you put it in a Petri dish, and then you allow it to just duplicate. So this one turns into two, those two turn into four, then someone could take one of these and then put it in their own Petri dish. These are a stem cell line. They all came from one unique embryonic stem cell, or what, what, what initially was a blastomere. So that's what they call about a stem cell line. So the debate, obviously, is when you uh, start an embryonic stem cell line, you are destroying an embryo. But I want to make the point here that their embryos are being destroyed in, in other processes, and namely in vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization. And maybe this will be my next video, fertilization. And this is just the notion that uh, they take a, a set of eggs out of a mother. It's usually a couple that's having trouble having a child. And they take a bunch of eggs out of the mother. So let's say they take there's maybe 10 to 30 eggs out of out of the mother. They, they actually perform a surgery to take, take them out of the ovaries of the mother. And then they fertilize them with, with, with semen. Either it might come from the, the father or a sperm donor. So then all of these become zygotes once they're fertilized with semen. So these all become zygotes. And then they allow them to develop. And they usually allow them to develop to the blastocyst stage. So eventually, these all of these turn into blastocysts. They have a a blastocele in the center, which is that, which is that this area of fluid. They have, of course, they ha have, of course, the embryo, the inner cell mass in them. And what they do is they look at the ones that they deem are healthier, or maybe you know the ones that are, are at least just not uh, unhealthy. And they'll take a couple of these and they'll implant these into the mother. So all of this is occurring in a petri dish. So maybe these four look good. So they're going to take these four. And they're going to implant these into a mother. And if all goes well, maybe one of these will turn into, uh, will give the couple a, a child. So this one will develop. And maybe the other ones won't. But you know, if you've seen John and, eight, John and Kate plus eight, you know that uh, many times they, they implant a lot of them in there just to increase the probability that you get at least one child. But every now and then, they implant seven or eight. And then you end up with eight kids. And that's why in vitro fertilization often results in kind of these, you know, multiple births and or 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 reality television shows on cable but what do they do with all of these other uh, perfectly well I won't say perfectly viable but these are embryos they may or may not be perfectly viable but you know you have these embryos that have the potential just like just like this one right here these all have the potential to turn into a human being but most fertility clinics, uh, they roughly half of them, they, they, they either throw these away, they destroy them, they allow them to die. A lot of these are frozen, but just the process of freezing them kills them, and then thawing them kills them again. So most of these, most of these, the process of in vitro fertilization for every uh, one uh, child that has a potential to develop into a, a full-fledged human being, you're actually destroying tens of of very viable embryos. So at least my take on it is if, if you're against, and I'm, I'm, I generally don't want to take a side on this, uh, but if you are against, in, if you are against em, you know, research that involves embryonic stem cells, embryonic stem cells, because of the destruction of embryos, on that same, I guess, philosophical ground, uh, you should also be against in vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization. Because both of these are involve the destruction of, of zygotes. I think, no, I, I, won't, I won't talk more about this because I really don't want to take sides, but I want to show that there is kind of a, an equivalence here that's completely lost in this debate on whether uh, embryonic stem cells should be used because they have a destruction of embryos, because you're destroying just as en many embryos uh, in this, well, I won't say just as many, but you are destroying embryos. There's hundreds of thousands of embryos that get destroyed and um, get frozen and obviously destroyed in that process as well through this in vitro fertilization process. So anyway, now hopefully you have the tools to kind of engage in the debate around stem cells. And you see that it all comes from what we learned about you know, meiosis. They, pro they, pro they, they, they produce these, these, these gametes. The, one, the male gamete fertilizes a female gamete. The zygote happens or gets created and starts splitting up the morula and then it turns in and then it keeps splitting and it differentiates into the blastocyst and then this is where the stem cells are so you already know enough signs to engage in kind of a very uh, um, uh, heated debate